Today I'm going to show how to get around a uh, little annoyance with some of the um, different consoles, uh, operational consoles that are in Fusion Middleware. Uh, one is the WebLogic Server Console, which is quite handy. And you can see here the standard uh, login screen and the uh, credentials that typically you use for an admin server during development. And once you log in, uh, if you're familiar with the Oracle Service Bus, you can bring up a, a, another window and go to the Oracle Service Bus console and you'll see that you'll immediately have the credentials that you had before from when you logged in as uh, in the WebLogic console. This is great for not having to log in over and over again, especially if you set the timeout to delay being very long. You can have all these consoles up and running and move back and forth and during your development life cycle and make it easier. You don't have to log in so often. Uh, one of the problems though is there's uh, uh, when you go into the Enterprise Manager for Fusion Middleware Control, you get the login prompt even though you've already logged in as WebLogic. And as I go in, I, I can use the same credentials as I had before and log in, which is an administrative user with all the rights and privileges, but it requires me to log in a second time, even though the Enterprise Manager has been deployed on the same admin server as the WebLogic server console. So you would think um, you shouldn't have to do that. Well, the reason that it's having a problem is because of the way that cookies are set up for these different applications. I'll show you what I mean. If you bring up the, uh, the cookie windows for after logging into these systems, you can see that there are two cookies defined. Uh, one is here, and this is the one that is used for the WebLogic server console. And you can see that it has both the name of the cookie, which is admin console session, as well as the path, which is set to slash. Um, this is the one that's used for WebLogic and for OSB. The, uh, this one here, J session ID, that, that's the default name for a cookie when one isn't specified in the deployment descriptor. And uh, here's the path that it uses in the cookie, slash em. What we need to do is, because these two are different, it's not uh, recognizing my credentials from one console to the other. So I just need to make them match, and that's actually quite an easy thing to do. I'll show you how to very quickly here. If we go into the WebLogic server configuration and go to deployments, we can see as we go down, we can see that the enterprise manager is just a an enterprise application that's running on the WebLogic server. If we go inside of there, we can get more details about the application. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that it's made up of uh, no EJBs, but it does have a single web application called EM. So I go in here. You can see that there's some configuration that you can do on this web application. Uh, several things that allow you to modify session information, but uh, not all the configuration and deployment descriptor uh, items can be uh, modified through the WebLogic console. Uh, for example, I can't set the uh, cookie name and I can't set the uh, cookie path in this console. So I need to create a what's called a deployment plan, which is an XML file that you attach to this, um, this ear file, which will allow you, or war file, that allow you to override some of these uh, default settings that are inside of the application. But to come up with the deployment plan file can be a little bit monotonous and, and uh, uh, difficult. So what I typically do when I want to create a deployment plan is I let WebLogic create a default plan for me and then I go in and I say, make simple modifications to it. And The way we do that is to make, make any change here and uh, do a save as a uh, save the deployment plan. So I'm going to change the session timeout uh, parameter here from 3600 to 36,000. It's something I like to do anyway just to make the timeouts uh, take longer when I'm in development. And then when I do a save it's going to ask me where I want to save the particular deployment plan. It gives us, it gives a suggestion. Uh, this is actually where I deployed the enterprise manager ear file except it's one level deeper so it's actually inside of this uh, SOA domain directory. So in the same path is where the em.ear file exists. And rather than calling this generic plan file I'll call it um, 
the EM war plan. Uh, so it specifies that it's a deployment plan specifically on the Enterprise Manager application and the uh, web application inside of there. And then I say OK. What this is going to do is it's going to generate a default plan. It's also going to redeploy the Enterprise Manager with these changes that I've done. So it just takes a minute to get all that up and running. Meanwhile, what I will do is uh, go over to the uh, deployment plan and open it in a text editor so that we can see uh, if I bring over my um, editor window here, you can see that in the same directory structure, uh, application SOA domain, I've got my EM ear and this new EM war plan file. And if I open it up, we can see what WebLogic created for us, this deployment plan XML file. And inside of here, there's two areas that you really can focus on. One is the variable definitions, which are up here. This is just a generic name like, along with a value. So this can be anything. It's just a, the variable name and this is what it equals. And then down below we can see that the actual variable assignment, it, it takes this variable and whatever value is set to there and puts it into this deployment descriptor. Uh, the actual values of the deployment descriptor can be found in the documentation or what I tend to do is I just go to the WebLogic console uh, war file look at the deployment scriptures in there, the weblogic.xml, or, or find another sample and I can easily get an idea of what this is supposed to look like. So for the change that I want to make, I'm going to define a variable. So I'll just copy this section here, duplicate it, and my variable will be for uh, cookie name. This here is just a timestamp. I don't really need it, but I'll just keep it there for consistency with the other settings. And then I need to set the value. I've already forgotten what that value is supposed to be, so I'll go back and take a look at the uh, cookie settings again. And then uh, I'll know what this value is supposed to be. So for this, I want the name to be admin console session, so we'll copy that information. And we'll just paste it into here. So this is just saying that this particular variable has this particular value. And then down below, I will copy this section here on this variable assignment. And I'll change this to be my cookie name and change the actual final deployment path here, deployment descriptor path to be cookie name. So that those two changes there, uh, if I redeploy this application, will give me a new cookie name but it won't help me with the cookie path. So I need to do one more variable and setting here to deal with the cookie path. And I want the path to just be slash. That's what uh, we had in the WebLogic console. So if I go down here, take the variable assignment, add a new one for path, change this to path, and that should be good. Just do a save on this and I can close this. So now all I need to do is redeploy this enterprise manager application using this new, pl new plan. And if we look at the deployments, if we go back down to the enterprise manager, enterprise manager application and just uh, check the box that's next to it, and then go back up to the top and say update, you'll see here that all the configuration for this application. We have the full location for the, the ear file itself as well as the, the plan file that originally was created by the WebLogic server but I've gone in and modified with the text editor. And all I need to do is just redeploy it with the same variable, the same values so that it will reread this deployment plan. So I just hit finish and that will uh, recreate this uh, server or the service with that new deployment plan. So while this is reloading the applications, what I'll do is go ahead and clear out the existing cookies that I have in my server just to make sure that um, everything is clean. So I'll take these and remove them. So they're gone. And actually when the WebLogic server comes back from loading this page, it'll see that my cookie's gone and automatically put me to the login screen as you just saw there. 
And let me go ahead and close these two windows just so we have a clean environment here. And do the login into the WebLogic server console. Now when I create a new window, I can see that my service bus continues to use the same cookie. And when I log into my Enterprise Manager, uh, it initially will head over to this login screen, but it will see that I've already got the cookie information and forward me onto the main page. This does take just a little while as it's loading. Meanwhile, I can actually see that I have logged into this, uh, this particular console, and if I view cookies, we can see that we only have one cookie, and both of them have the admin, admin console session as name and the path as slash, so both of them will be fine, and as soon as this loads, we'll see that it skips the actual login page. And there's the, uh, the application without logging in. So now if I uh, log out of this particular console, we'll be able to see that uh, they will actually log us out of our OSB as well as our WebLogic server console. If I go to my Enterprise Manager and log in, as soon as I can get this page and it starts to load the application, we can see that if I go back to my OSB, it's logged in, and my WebLogic server is all logged in. So they all they all work, and uh, as long as those timeouts are set pretty high, you can have all of your consoles up and running all day while you're working on your development. You can go back into these consoles and do refreshes and, uh, and do the work without having to type in WebLogic, WebLogic over and over and over again. So I hope that was helpful. Enjoy.